All right, assalamu alaikum everyone. Welcome, another Juma. alhamdulillah. Glad to see everybody here. Uh, inshallah, we'll start here shortly. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna alhamdulillah wa nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'afiru wa na'uzu billah min shiruri anfusina wa min sayyati amalina man yahdihillahu falamudillala wa man yuddil falahadiyala ashadu an la ilaha illallahu wahduhu la sharika la ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu Ya ayyuhal lazina amanu tukullaha haqqa tukatihi wala tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun Ya ayyuhal nas attaku rabbukum alazi khalakakum min nafsin wahida wa khalaka minhuma tijaran kasiran munisa'a wa tukullahi alazi tusa'aluna bihi wal arham inna allaha kana alaykum rakiba Ya ayyuhal lazina amanu tukullaha haqqa Ya ayyuhal lazina amanu tukullaha wa kulu kawlan sadida yuslih lakum amalakum wa yaghfir lakum zinubakum my dear brothers and sisters, all thanks and praise belong to Allah. We seek his help and his forgiveness. And we seek refuge in Allah from the evil within ourselves and from the consequences of our evil deeds. And whosoever Allah guides will never be led astray. And whosoever Allah leads astray will never find guidance. And I bear witness that there is no God but Allah alone without any partners and I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu is his servant and his messengers. And oh, you have believed, fear Allah as he should be feared, and do not die except as Muslims in submission to him. And oh, you have believed, fear Allah and speak words of appropriate justice. He will amend for you your deeds, forgive you your sins, and whoever obeys Allah and his messenger has certainly attained a great attainment. My dear brothers and sisters, we've been on this, at least I've been on this journey about learning uh, about the 99 names of Allah. And we've gone pretty far along. We've, we're now into about 32 names. Inshallah, I'm going to cover three more names today. And the three names I'd like to uh, cover are going to be Al-Halim, Al-Azim, and Al-Ghafur. Now, I'd like to remind myself first, and then all of you listening, that we seek to learn from these names of Allah so that we can have a share in these attributes and improve ourselves as human beings. Uh, these names are there for us to learn from. Everything in front of us in the Quran is there from us, for us to learn from and to inform ourselves about our creator. So the first of these names today I'd like to talk about is Al-Halim. The meaning of this name is the mild, the clement one. He who observes the rebelliousness of his creations with patience and does not react immediately. His creations disobeying his commands does not cause him to seek revenge, be in haste, be angry, or recklessness. The root word of halim is ha la mim, which means lenient, forbearing, gentle, to be calm and not hasty and serene. We're reminded in the Quran in Surah Nahl, verse 61, that, quote, if Allah were to punish people immediately for their wrongdoing, he would not have left a single being on earth, but he delays them for an appointed term, and when their time arrives, they cannot delay it for a moment, nor could they advance it, end quote. Not being immediately punished for our disobedience is a mercy from Allah and a blessing. It is a gift that Allah gives to all of us. Allah gives us ample time to learn from our transgressions and ask for guidance from Allah. In Surah Nahal, the chapter where this verse comes from, has the theme of blessings from Allah and showing gratitude for those blessings. And giving us guidance is a way for Allah to say, you know, here's an opportunity for you to learn. And letting us know about what is good for us through scripture is also a blessing for us because Allah is now saying, here's the guidance I want you to follow. And in all the examples we find in the Quran, whenever there were a people uh, who were destroyed by Allah, you know, we take Lut alayhi salam, for example, or Noah, for instance, or any of the other prophets, there was a period of time in which Allah said, here's guidance for you. Here's guidance for you. Here's guidance for you. Follow what your prophet is telling you. I have commanded him to give you the right message. So all of those are opportunities for us. And Allah is constantly reminding us of these and saying, there is a day of judgment. Here's an opportunity for you to come back on the straight path because Allah wants to forgive us. In verse 63 of Surah Nahal, Allah also mentions that by Allah, we have surely sent messengers to communities before you, O prophet. But Satan made their misdeeds appealing to them. So he is their patron today and they will suffer a painful punishment. So a reminder again from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the day of judgment will come when we will all be held to account for what we used to do. And think about the last time when you did something intentionally that you knew was against the command of Allah. 
and think about the outcome from that experience. Now think about all the times when you did things that you knew were in disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yet you still acted upon it. The question then becomes importantly, did you go back to Allah and ask for forgiveness? So I like to remind myself first, and then all of you listening that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-halim. He is the all for being. He is patient. He is one who gives us clemency regardless of what we do. So we should always seek his guidance and we should always be grateful for his patience. And the one who does not jump to punish every time his creations disobey him should be assigned to us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful first before he punishes. And we can learn from this attribute as well. You know, the capacity for patience, having that mild attitude with people, with ourselves, that's a quality we tend to praise in other people. When somebody demonstrates that to us, we are in awe most of the time. We find that this is a wonderful quality for all of us to have, but each and every one of us has different levels of patience. So we're all trying our best in some ways or another to try to be or try to emulate this particular attribute of having patience, having clemency, uh, not just with others in our community members or family members or friends or even what we find in the news media. Sometimes it's really hard to just kind of, you know, brush all that aside and, and uh, you know, let our emotions kind of ride the day out. So we can always go back to the Quran and we can always go back to the Hadith and find examples from this, from the Prophet ﷺ, because Allah reminds us that the Prophet ﷺ is the best example for us, uh, no matter what the situation. And we can see this in one of the Hadiths from the Prophet ﷺ, whenever he's feeling distressed, he used to make this following dua. La ilaha illallah al-azim al-halim, la ilaha illallah rabbu samawati wal ardi, rabbul arsh al-azim. There is no one else worthy of worship except Allah, the most beneficent, the all-forbearing. And there's no one else worthy of worship except Allah, the Lord of the heavens and the earth, and the Lord of the magnificent throne. So the magnificent throne in this case is making reference to the, the throne in which Allah sits. We can't see it. And this kind of goes into the next name that, uh, um, that I want to talk about today, which is Al-Azim, which means the tremendous, the magnificent, the mighty, the one worthy of extolment. And the root word of Azim is Ain Za Mim, which means to be great, to be large, to be big and vast, to be enormous in rank, honored and above imperfection. Now for our consideration, we can think about this in two different ways. One of them is uh, we understand the word great linguistically. It means something that's grand, something that's big, uh, something that's magnificent to behold. So if we think about uh, what we are able to see visually, you, you can think about examples like the whale or an elephant, uh, or even when you look up in the sky, the portion of the sky we can see around us. I mean, we can visually take all that information in and we can see the size and we can see the scale and we can imagine ourselves not being anything to that scale. So it's grandeur is what captivates our attention, captivates our wonder. And the other way to think about this is that what is it that our sight cannot completely encompass or we can't see at all? So think about uh, if you were out in space looking down on the earth, you can see the whole earth, you can imagine the scale and you can see how large it is, but you will not be able to see what is within every single inch of that sphere. It's not possible. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows this and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to know what is there, but we are not able to comprehend that. So in that respect, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also Al-Azim, the greatest, the most honored. And as a people, we may have to figure out some things on our own, but no matter how hard we try, not everything is within our, our uh, purview or our grasp. We're also reminded about this in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 255. He fully knows what is ahead of them and what is behind them, but no one can grasp any of his knowledge except what he wills to reveal. His seat encompasses the heavens and the earth, and the preservation of both does not tire him, for he is the most high, the greatest. There are days when all of us feel like we don't have control of our lives. And for those days, remembering Allah as Al-Azim is beneficial for us. And there's an authentic uh, hadith narrated by Sahih al-Bukhari that tells us about this. And Allah, Allah's messenger وسلم, said two words, light on the tongue, but weigh heavily in the balance and are loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And those two, and those two words or phrases are Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, Subhanallah hilazim. Glorified is Allah and praised is He. Glorified is Allah, the Most Great. Now these praises of Allah can be said any time, day or night, and just by our very nature, we are forgetful creatures. And this is a reminder to us to be grateful to the one who created us all. And if you're one of those folks who likes to practice dhikr regularly, this is a good one to add to your routine, just to say, subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanallah hil azim. And that constant reminder about Allah, that constant gratitude that we, if we give ourselves that, will be a way for us to just calm down and just kind of let things be and not let it bother us too much. So the last name I'd like to discuss with you today is Al Ghafur, the all forgiving, the one who forgives time and again in perpetuity the transgressions of his believers. And the root word Ghafur comes from Ghain, Fa, Ra, which means to cover, to veil, to conceal, to forgive, to cover something, to protect it from dirt. It's Allah's way of saying, I, I'm not going to let anything happen to this thing. And this is the same root word for another name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al Ghafar. Uh, and we talked about this name some time ago, and that what it means is he is full of forgiveness. Now, if both Al Ghafar and Al Ghafur share the same root word, then what is the difference between the two? And it's a very subtle difference. Al Ghafar and Al Ghafur focus on the concept of forgiveness. And the difference between them is the difference between quality and quantity. So Al Ghafar is the one who forgives our sins no matter how many times we commit it, no matter how many sins we commit. And Al Ghafur is one who forgives the sin no matter how big it is. So if a servant of Allah repents, returns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive his servant. And this is mentioned to us in the Quran in Surah Taha, verse number 82. But I am truly most forgiving to whoever repents, believes, and does good, then persists on true guidance. And shaitan is always looking for ways to misguide us. Let's not, let's not fool ourselves about that. Always wanting to make sure that we fall into the same trap that shaitan fall when he refused to bow in front of uh, Adam alayhi salam. When Allah said to the angels, you know, here I've created Adam, bow and shaitan refused. So he was from among the jinn who refused to obey Allah, but him having that status, being up there with the angels in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that he was somebody who was very much revered at least at, at some level to where he had this kind of audience and presence. So shaitan never asked for Allah's forgiveness and proceeded to double down on this claim that he is superior to Adam alayhi salam. So every time we ask for Allah's forgiveness and stay on the path that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to follow, we are persisting towards true guidance and pulling ourselves away from shaitan. Now imagine if we did not have this knowledge of forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At some point, we would be overcome with guilt and despair because we will not see past this world. We would feel the hopelessness that comes with knowing that our existence will come to an end and there's nothing we can do to stop it. And we would feel as if there was nothing more in this world that we can do to give ourselves hope. So this kind of despair is something that Allah is protecting us from when Allah gives us knowledge, when Allah gives us these kinds of uh, information to learn from. Protecting our mental health, which in turn also has an impact on our physical health is very, very important. So by knowing that Allah is Al Ghafur and Al Ghafar, we have the confidence knowing that every time we veer off the path of Allah, whether intentionally or unintentionally, there is a way back for us. When we ask Allah for forgiveness, we are asking Allah to cover our sins and protect us from the shame that may follow. And regardless of how big we think the sin may be, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives us except for one sin. And the one sin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not forgive is associating someone else with him in worship. And once we have accept, accepted Allah as the Lord of the day of judgment and the one who created us all, we should never associate or seek help from any creation or being other than Allah. And this is told to us clearly in Surah Nisa, verse number 48, that indeed Allah does not forgive associating others with him in worship, but forgives anything else of whoever he wills. And whoever associates others with Allah has indeed committed a grave sin. 
So let's be sure that we anchor our belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not in any creation or any object, but solely in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there's no being or object in this world that can have the same status as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So our belief should remain strong in our creator and should be firmly rooted in knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the, is the best protector of all, is the best guide of all, is the one who will always show us the way. And when we're ready to find it, when we're ready to accept this, it will just happen naturally for us. Inshallah, I'll conclude this khutbah in the second half. I seek forgiveness from Allah for me and for you and to the rest of the Muslims. So ask him for forgiveness. He's the forgiver, the merciful. Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wa salatu salamu ala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the name of Allah, the exalted. Blessings and peace be upon the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Today, my dear brothers and sisters, I briefly touched on three of the beautiful names of Allah, Al-Halim, Al-Azim, and Al-Ghafur. So by studying these names, uh, at least personally, I find myself growing closer and closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I find that learning more about the creator, learning more about the different attributes that we ourselves appreciate and would like to emulate is a way for us to get better, or at least for myself to get better. And inshallah, hopefully, uh, by sharing this with you, you yourself will find value in this as well. And by contemplating about these attributes, even for a few minutes, is a way for us to recenter ourselves by seeking the pleasure of Allah. We're working towards elevating ourselves, not just in this world, but also in the hereafter. And let's remember that this world, like all of Allah's creation, is going to end. One day we will find ourselves in front of our creator being judged for our actions. And if you think about this world as being coming to an end and there's nothing after this, it's never a good feeling. In fact, um, I think one could argue that that feeling of fear of missing out or FOMO as it's uh, generally referred to is one way for us to get into a state of despair. Always chasing something, always wanting to have that because we have this limited time is not a good place for any of us. So inshallah, let's take today as an opportunity to become gentler, not just with ourselves, but also with our family, our friends, our community members, and we should remember that Al-Halim is patient with us. Allah is forbearing. And by being patient with ourselves through our personal struggles, we will find the strength to extend this patience to others. And all of us have patience. Some of us have more of it than others. However, we can all strive to increase that level of patience higher than what it is today. And we should also remember that there's a limit to our ability to realize the complete greatness of Allah. And this is in a way a blessing from Allah. Because if we knew everything, I mean everything, what's going to happen in the future, what is not, our minds may not be able to digest all of that information. So consider it this way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not tell us the day we will die. If we had this knowledge exactly to the minute, exactly to the date when we're going to die, imagine what we would do with that information. Imagine how will we use that information. And think about how we might treat one another if we all knew when our last day was in this week, in this world, up to that point. Can you imagine a scenario where this would be helpful? What about a scenario where this will lead to chaos and recklessness? Every single person knew exactly the minute and day they were going to die. So we should remind ourselves that Allah's mercy is infinite. And there's a reason why we don't know everything. There's a reason why we don't understand everything. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all forgiving and the size of your sin is no barrier to keeping you from Allah's mercy. And this knowledge is a source of hope for us that we should continue to work on ourselves. And as we learn more about Allah, we find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the tools we need to grow closer to him. The knowledge that we acquire is given to us when we are ready to accept it. As people, we like to think that we can read any number of books, absorb all the knowledge that is on offer. However, that is short-sightedness as human beings. And inshallah, may Allah keep us guided by allowing us to emulate these attributes in our lives so that we are striving to become better versions of ourselves. So my dear brothers and sisters, I hope you found benefit from today's discussion. Let us all pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides our hearts towards him. And may we all find inside of our heart the strength to stay firm on the path of Allah. And may Allah forgive all of our shortcomings for he is oft forgiving, most merciful. 
So let us pray that Allah, when we stray, please forgive us and do not let our hearts deviate after you have guided us. Grant us your mercy. You are indeed the giver of all bounties. O oh love, bless us with pious spouses and offspring who will be the joy of our hearts and make us models for the righteous. O oh love, please have mercy upon our parents and the believers on the day of judgment. Forgive our sins, absolve us of our misdeeds, and allow us each to die as one of the virtuous. O oh love, please guide the Muslim Ummah closer to you and protect us from those who lead us astray intentionally or unintentionally. And O oh Allah, please guard our health, the health of those who we love, and the health of those who endeavor to provide care and service to the members of our community who are in need. Rabbana hablana min mizwajina wa zariyati wa kurrata ayni kurrata kurrata yunin waj'alna lil muttaqina imama Rabbana faqfir lana zunubana wa kafir anna sayyiatina wa tawafana ma alabrar Rabbi ja'alni mukim wa salati wa min zariyati Rabbana wa taqabal dua Rabbana aghfir li wa li walidiya wa lil mu'minina yawma yakum al hisab ربنا لا تزغ لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وحب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوحاب ربنا عليك توكلنا وإليك أنبنا وإليك المصير ربنا لا تجعلنا فتنة للذين كفروا واغفر لنا ربنا إنك أنت الأزيم الحكيم إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينحى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعزكم لا لكم تذكرون فذكروني أذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تكفرون Ameen. My dear brother and sister, I'd like to conclude this khutbah, inshallah. I wish you all a blessed Jummah, uh, and I hope you benefit from this information.